All right, now that we've got the basics of Apache going, I want to do a lab. And this is one, you can print this out if you want to. The, the first part of it is install the RPMs. You don't have that because we're using CentOS and it was there already. With uh, CentOS, you would do a yum install HTTPD. I wonder what that would do for us since this is early in my lecture and I can trash this if I need to. Um, I'm going to do a yum. Yum install HTTPD. And let's see if it can find it. Now probably what it's going to do is going to, it's going to say HTTPD is already installed. Yeah, yum, actually that's Yellow Dog Update Manager is actually going to go out to the internet to the CentOS servers and bring down this package with all of its dependencies. There's your trick. So what it did is it went out to some different EDUs, looked around, and it said package HTTPD this is the version. Nothing new's come out. It's already installed. Nothing to do. Now I also could have done yum update. Well yum update would update all of it. But anyway, that's the way you'd install it if it wasn't already there. But it was already there for us, so that makes that pretty easy. Let's go back to our lab for just a second. That's got it installed. Now, when we do anything, here's the premise of my lab. I've got three or four users, ever how many, it doesn't matter. If there's a thousand, you do it the same way. And these users each want their own personal web space. So that if you can hit the IP address and then go to Chloe's directory and get Chloe's web page, or go to Tanil's web page or her space and get her web page. Uh, a lot of ISPs like Charter will do this. You have a Charter account. Well, you can also go to this IP address, tilde so-and-so, your name or your user account, and here's you some web space that you can post stuff for your buddies. So that's kind of cool. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to give all of our users, or some of our users at least, web space. Now, we're going to start configuring Apache. Etsy HTTPD conf. And there's our file right there, httpd.conf. And it is sitting in the Etsy HTTPD conf directory. Now remember, Etsy is your directory where most of your configuration files are going to go. HTTPD, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, Daemon, that's the name of our program. It's the configuration directory. So it makes sense that our httpd.conf file would sit in there. Now, just real quickly, let's take a look at this guy. I'm going to say more httpd.conf. Um, one page was 3%. So you can see it's a good sized file. One good thing about it though is it's, it's that big because it is very well documented. So this is something I want you to get used to. And even in stuff that's not anything to do with this class, this is good practice. And I have goofed this up enough to tell you, yes, this is a good idea. I'm going to say copy http.conf httpd.org. Um, sometimes I'll do httpd.back if I want. I can have several copies of it. It's just a text file. They're way small. But this is actually the original httpd file before I go screwing with it. Now, here's what happens. Students jump in and they start modifying their httpd.conf and they trash it to the point that it's not even usable. Okay, that's expected when you're learning. Um, if you do that, what happens? Well, if you got your backup, all you got to do is remove the trashed one and then copy your backup and you're going again. But if you've trashed it and you don't have a backup, you're in a mess. You wind up having to reboot your uh, machine to get your VM straightened back out again. In the real world, you'd be in a real mess. You can use .bak, but I like the ORIG just because this is the actual original. Now, if I monkeyed with it and got it to a point where I liked it, I might do a backup at that point so I could get it back to the point that I liked it, even though it wasn't the original. So, HTTP.conf and HTTP.original, or HTTP.conf.original would, would have been understandable, too. And so that's why I always make you do that. I used back there, but I like original. We're going to edit our Apache configuration file. 
go to it. We're going to find the line, user directory, disabled, because by default, these are going to be disabled. And we're going to see that a pound sign is a remark. Let's just go ahead and get cranking here. I'm going to say VIM, try it again, VIM HTTPD.conf. Now, here's what's cool about VI and VIM. It actually understands that a pound sign means a remark or something, you know, you're just explaining something. Y'all are coders, you should get remarks. But it color codes those a dark blue. So that you and then the stuff that actually means something is has a different color. So you have different tokens and different stuff that goes with it. So it should make sense. All right, and you can dig through this, and you know a lot of the stuff's going to go over your head, but a lot of the stuff kind of makes sense. Um, listen to port 80. We're going to find out later. What if you want to listen to 80 and 8080? You have to add another listen command in there. So that's that's telling you what ports you want to listen to. All right. So what I said was find user dear. Um, I'm going to say slash since I'm using vi now. You, Again, I don't care if you want to use gedit for this or if you want to use um, Pico or Nano to edit this with because this, this isn't a Linux class. It's a it's a server class, so you can use what you want to. But I want to use um, this, and and VIM uses a slash user dir. So there we go. This is where it starts talking about user directories. Um, not sure. You'd have to, you'd have to RTFM to see if if you could do the user, a case insensitive search. All right, user dear is disabled by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in, and I'm going to say insert a pound sign. So now the user directory is no longer disabled. Then I'm going to pop in, and take out a pound sign and say, okay, my user directory is going to be public HTML. So if user Frederico wants to have some web space, he just has to have a public HTML directory, and that's where it's going to search for it by default. Okay, going on down. This is all the stuff that goes along with it. Where are people's home directories found? In the home directory. So if I were user Frederico, I would have a directory slash home slash Frederico slash public HTML where my files would be. If if I were user Steven, it'd be slash home slash Steven public HTML. So whatever my username is, that's what that star is. That means any of the users. Now this is just some real basic rights and options for user directories. Um, are these going to be red right now? Are they going to affect anything? What am I shooting for? They're pounded out. Are there remarks? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my X key just to get rid of a single character, and I'm going to pull out all of these things. Notice they popped into some pretty colors. So now they're actually going to be red um, by the operating system when I start. So that's enough just to get things cranking a little bit. So I'm going to say escape, colon, right, quit and save it. Now, anytime that you edit the httpd.conf file, you have to restart Apache because Apache by default only reads this file when it starts. It starts, it reads this file, and then it runs. So it could run for years and years and years and never reread it. So we want this guy to reread it. Service httpd restart. The, the what? Everybody's individual is going to be. Well, your home directory would be. There's where everybody's home directory is going to be, and then the their web space is going to be underneath that. In their home directory. So, have we ever looked at Etsy scale before? Etsy scale is a directory that's used anytime you create a new user. So if I did user add Fred right now, 
he wouldn't have anything in his directory. But if we go to Etsy scale, I'm going to say make directory public HTML, and this is in the lab. So that says, okay, anytime you create a user, um, they're going to get a copy of this skeleton directory. And let's see it work. User add, tell you what, I'll go one better. Um, CD public HTML, I'm going to do a VIM index.html. HTML. Web page. This default user web page. And let's put a H1 so it actually looks funky. It looks like H HTML code. Right quit. So that is the default web page for anybody that, that has a directory on here. Now I'm going to add some users. User add Wilbur. User add Orville. User add Barney. So I can add users all day long. CD home, there's Orville and Barney and Wilbur. And if I go into Wilbur's directory, check it out, public HTML. If I say, um, right now I'm in home Wilbur public HTML. I have an index.html, that is, what do you know? This default user web page. Etsy scale. No, I made public HTML in scale. Etsy scale already existed. Yeah, I made that stuff in Etsy scale. All right, so those three users are going to have. Now, did did will Stephen have a public HTML? Stephen already existed. So if I say ls Stephen, nope, he doesn't have one. So it doesn't back up and get users that you've already created. Now. What we need to look at is about rights. Here's our lab. There's our user ad. There's where we modified Etsy scale. Set the rights. So I'm going to chmod to 711 home wilder so that people, people can see in there. All righty. Right now, what are the rights? Everybody is seven zero zero. Remember, you've got three characters, you got users, you've got group, and you've got other. So what I want to do is ch mod seven one one Orville. Wilbur. Hey, I didn't want to get all of them though. Barney. Now when I do ls-l, now people can execute and can get into there. Execute what? Yeah, let's, well, L, read you'd need for ls, but this would actually let you have access to it. Alright, let's take a look now. I still should be 138. Um, 138. Did this affect my default website? No, it's still there. But now I should be able to say tilde, tilde characters top left of the keyboard, and Wilbur. This is default user web page. That's what the that's just what rights you need. Just kind of go with it for right now. I know that's a little bit of hand waving, but but that's it for right now. So let's go change Wilbur's just to make him different. Um there's Wilbur, I'm already there. Go into his public HTML. Let's look and see who owns it. It's actually Wilbur. Etsy Scale did that for us. But I'm gonna do a VIM of index.html. Let's throw us a horizontal rule in there.
This has been modified by Wilbur. Colin WQ. Now, since I changed his web page, do I need to go back out and restart Apache? No, the only time you have to restart Apache is if you make changes to the index dot or the uh, httpd.conf file. That's the only time you have to monkey with it. All right, so now here's Orville, and I can say Control F5. His doesn't change, but if I go to Wilbur, there's Wilbur. Has been modified by Wilbur, and just for good measure, I can go to Barney. If I can ever get there, Barney. Barney's didn't change either. So that's how you give your users their own personal space. Alrighty.